Hello and welcome back to Game of Trades, your number one channel for videos on the stock market and cryptocurrencies. So after the S&P 500 pretty much did nothing for the past three weeks, we saw a rapid 3% move down here as we had a renewal of recessionary fears, renewal of concerns around the banking crisis that really brought the markets. And now today, all of those fears are being retraced. And this is really whipsawing investors around. You get news headlines saying the banking crisis is back on here at the bottom. And now you're seeing news headlines saying that everything is fine and that the markets have a lot of runway higher. And this is just the beginning of a large bull run. In this video, I'm going to show you you what the reality of the macro environment is, what the bigger picture looks like. And then towards the end of the video, I'm going to show you some internal dynamics that are happening in the markets right now that uh, potentially give us some insight regarding where the market is going to be going next. Uh, so I hope you guys are going to enjoy this one. If you do, don't forget to smash the like button. Uh, and of course, click on that subscribe button if you are new here. Now, without further ado, let's get right into it. Now, a lot of people right now are saying that a recession is already priced in, that we've had this big 27% drop in the market throughout 2022 and that priced in a mild recession. And now as soon as the Fed begins to pivot on monetary policy, you're gonna see a big move up uh, in the stock market. So is a recession priced in? That's a very good question. Uh, if we look at the yield curve that has a perfect uh, track record at predicting recessions, you can see after each inversion, you have a recession. This is the most accurate uh, signal of a recession that we've had throughout history. And you can see that the yield curve is inverted. So there is this narrative out there that says the yield curve is inverted. And so, you know, everybody's aware that we are heading into a recession. And so that's already priced in by the market. And so we have to look past that and we shouldn't be too concerned about a recession. Let's see in the past three recessions, when did the stock market begin to drop because of a recession? And what did the yield curve look like at those moments? Let's first highlight in red 2008 right here. Let's highlight in red the 2000 bear market right here. And let's highlight the very shallow 1989 to 1990 bear market right here. And I've included this period of volatility in 1989 because returns throughout this period were very low. If you had bought here in October of 1989, it would have been a very tough period to be in the market right here. So you can see in all of those instances, the vast majority of the bear market actually no, the entirety of these three bear markets were priced in when the yield curve was steepening. So the yield curve was coming out of inversion and going up as monetary policy here was actually easing. The Fed was cutting rates here. You can see that happened as well. That was also the case in 2008 here where the entirety of the bear market happened when the yield curve was steepening. And in 1990, again, the entirety of the bear market happened when the yield curve was steepening. Now, if you look at the 2022 bear market that we've had so far, let's put it in green so that we can actually differentiate these bear markets because they're not the same. This was a bear market that was induced by the Federal Reserve that was hiking rates very aggressively because of inflation. And so valuations were coming down, but there was no real economic weakness, no recession throughout this period. And you can see, in fact, that the yield curve throughout this period was not steepening. It was flattening. So it was heading down into inversion. It's only been really a few weeks since we've started to see potentially the first signs that the yield curve is steepening. And you can see, for example, in 2008, the yield curve was steepening for a while before the stock market actually began to price in the recession. Same thing in 1990, the real top of the market here occurred right here after the yield curve had already uh, steepened quite a bit. So from now on, you can see here over the last week, as we've had this drop in the market, we've seen the yield curve continue to steepen as market participants are seeing the banking crisis get worse. And so increasing the probability that a recession does occur over the next few months. So you're starting to see the bond market price in that recession. But to me, this simple analysis right here shows us that we have not yet seen a recession get priced in. We will see the recession get priced in when the yield curve has steepened significantly from current levels. The best case scenario 
you see the recession get completely priced in by the stock market when the yield curve is around here. The worst case scenario is like 2008, where you see the stock market bottom when the yield curve is here, right? So that leaves a huge amount of room still for the financial markets to continue pricing in a recession as the yield curve steepens. Now, of course, that's typically correlated with a rising unemployment rate. And that's really what the yield curve is also telling us right now is that the banking crisis here that's causing a steepening in the yield curve is likely to trigger a recession as we see the yield curve de-invert and begin steepening just like it did here in 2007. Inversion steepening as the recession plays out and same thing in 1990. Inversion steepening as the recession plays out and you have the unemployment rate that's rising. So whether you look at the yield curve, you look at the stock market, you look at the labor market, nothing shows us that financial markets have already priced in a recession. So that's our opinion right now. Now, from a technical standpoint on the S&P 500, we're seeing the same level that we had in February. Lots of reactions along this line here. Lots of investors selling at this level if they are concerned about a recession. Now we make updates multiple times a week on the technicals of the S&P 500 on our tactical watch list at gameoftrades.net along with the key assets that we have uh, in our model portfolio right now to help you time the entries and the exits of these positions. So if you want a more detailed outlook on the S&P, make sure to go and check out our website. But one thing uh, that we've been discussing over the last few weeks here is the narrowness of the rally that we saw throughout March and April here. Now you can see here, I've added the stocks above their 200 day moving average on the S&P 500. So this is an indicator that tells you how many stocks are above and how many stocks are below their 200 day moving average. And you can see here, we had a very strong reading in February of 2023. So lots of stocks participating in the rally here in February. And then look at what happened more recently in March and April, where we had a much weaker reading on this indicator. Uh, and so showing you that the participation in the rally that we had more recently was a lot weaker than the one we had in February. Now, does that make sense? I think it does because you had SVB collapse, you had a banking crisis here. Yes, stocks were oversold and you got a bounce, but ultimately the banking crisis was not bullish for the market. Ultimately, you are seeing that uh, be reflected in stocks underneath the surface as you are seeing weaker and weaker participation uh, in the market rally here in a very similar fashion to the way we saw weaker and weaker participation heading into the big top in 2021. You can see here breadth was very strong in April of 2021. And then from that moment on, you had less and less stocks participating in the rally leading up to December of 2021. Now, of course, these divergences took a long time to play out. So, so that does give you a sense for the timeline of these indicators. You can see right now uh, on the left hand side here, only 50% of stocks right now are above their 200 day moving average. Now, if you look at the uh, stock market itself, it's very much above its 200 day moving average. So only a few stocks are holding up the market. If these few stocks were to give up the ghost and snap back to what most stocks are actually reflecting, we should at the very least be trading underneath the 200 day moving average. Now as a quick additional proof, you can see what happens to market breadth in successful rallies. You can see here in 2019, stocks got very oversold here in 2018, and then they surged again uh, here, very strong breadth reading. Then you had a correction here in May of 2019, so breadth came down. And then on the recovery after that correction, you had a very, very strong breadth reading taking out the previous high. Then again here, in September of 2019, another very strong breadth reading. So here in 2019, you had the market move higher as the breadth was confirming that move. Today, we had the stock market retest that high that we had 
in February and the breadth definitely not confirmed that we were supposed to be going higher. Now, this is something that we posted about again and again on the website at gameoftrades.net. Stock market losing momentum. Narrow leadership makes for an unsustainable rally here. That was posted earlier in April. So if you are a member on our website, hopefully you were able to take advantage of this setup through the bets that we have on the model portfolio. Now that's about all I wanted to cover in this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to smash the like button and click on that subscribe button if you haven't already. Now in the meantime, I wish you good luck on your trading and see you next time.